Alrighty guys, so thanks for showing up to my live chat on the Penguin update and primarily on Anchor Text. Um, so just give you to give you guys like a little like kind of precursor. Um, a little over a month ago, right around when uh, ALN and BMR were getting de-indexed and there was just a lot of chaos um, in the SEO realm, people started kind of talking about the potential for a negative penalty for uh, over-optimizing your anchor text. And um, right away that kind of caught my attention um, for a variety of reasons. One is you know, there hadn't really been that much talk about um, what anchor text should look like, especially like your overall portfolio, what it should look like. Everybody was just kind of, you know, focusing on exact match anchor text, you know, and that was working very well. And then people started reporting all of these problems happening. And of course, it's a guessing game, but a lot of people were guessing it had something to do with anchor text. And when you think about it, anchor text is probably one of the easiest uh, metrics that Google can analyze, um, you know, because every time they're grabbing a link, they're grabbing the anchor text. And if you go and you look at Google Webmaster Tools, for example, you guys can actually get a dump of your uh, of your anchor text according to Google. So we already know that they have that uh, data, and we already know that they're doing analysis, you know, to try to find what keywords to rank you for. So they have all this data on anchor text, and it's very easy for them to crunch those numbers. And, um, sorry, I just read chat over there. And um, since it's very easy for them to crunch those numbers, if there's, you know, very big footprints for an SEO in there, then it's very easy for Google to, um, to find the footprints of an SEO in anchor text. So um, I decided to try to do some analysis and figure out, you know, what does natural anchor text really look like? Because um, everybody that was talking about it at the time was saying, you know, it's a mixture of exact match. It's a mixture of, you know, uh, secondary keywords, partial matching keywords, um, generic anchor text, and uh, just straight URLs. I mean, I, everybody knew that um, when we were talking about kind of diversifying your anchor text portfolio, but no one really was dropping any kind of like solid concrete numbers that we could look at and really get a good idea of what we should be aiming for for natural anchor text. So I worked with my buddy Dave and we um, did a lot of scraping and were able to come up with uh, a lot of data on anchor text and a lot of data on what uh, a normal site looks like in terms of their anchor text portfolio. Um, but first off, let me go over to Microsite Masters. Uh, Microsite Masters, they're a rank tracking tool um, developed by my buddies. Uh, they got Nick over there, Alex Cardine, and Rob. You know a lot of them by you know uh, their names on Wicked Fire other forums, such as Cardine and and uh, Bofu. Um, and they developed a great rank tracking tool over here. And actually, last week when this Penguin uh, update happened and there was a lot of uh, a lot of chaos, I actually pinged Rob and I said, "Hey, Rob, um, I mean, you guys are a fairly big uh, search tracking tool. A lot of people use you, and primarily a lot of SEOs use you. So, could you just, you know, uh, let me know uh, how the ranks are looking? Is everybody dropping across the board?" And he pinged me back and he said, "You gave me some info, and we looked at it, and it and it wasn't." a huge drop. It wasn't like SEOs got taken out. Some SEOs were dropping, some SEOs were going up, um, but there wasn't this huge drop across the board, um, which was pretty interesting. And then today they come up, uh, th they did some further analysis on Google Penguin, which was great because this is a great precursor to anchor text. Um, I'll shoot you guys a, uh, a link um, to the entire article. Um, but the big part that they actually do some analysis is right here, which is kind of the primary reason why I'm talking about anchor text today. And it's because um, everybody was theorizing that anchor text was a m big reason why people were getting hit by whatever, you know, regardless if you want to call it the penguin update or anchor text over optimization or whatever. And they did analysis and they pretty much just clearly, um, clearly showed that it was anchor text that caused uh, most of the uh, the sites to get penalized by Penguin. Um, if you look at these two graphs right here, so on the top graph, uh, we're looking at sites that weren't penalized, and so you can see that there was uh, sites all across the board. You know, some sites weren't penalized and they had 100% anchor text. Um, some weren't penalized and they only had 10%. Uh, 
Um, but the important thing is to look at the sites that were penalized. Now, if it had nothing to do with anchor text, we'd assume that we'd see a very similar graph to the one on top. But you look down there, it's not the case at all. In fact, no site got penalized if it had less than 60% um, you know, anchor text matching their keywords, which I look at as exact match anchor text. And that's huge. So you look at it, the sites that got penalized, 65%, 75%, you know, 80%, 90%, 100%. That's huge. I mean, that pretty much tells us what was really happening here. And it's that Google was looking at anchor text. It's easy for them to analyze, way much easier than content um, or, you know, trying to do analysis on, like, where links are coming from certain pro properties. It's way easier to just look at anchor text and see massive footprints. And one of the massive footprints is obviously that people are using too much exact match anchor text. So thanks a lot for um, Bofu and the guys over at Microsite Masters. Um, they're a great software, and, you know, they did some great analysis here. And what it really showed us is that anchor text is an issue, and it's something that we should really think about. Um, so let's, uh, let's switch over and look at this data. Um, so basically, I took uh, about like 150 top sites according to Alexa across the board. Um, if you go to Alexa, you can kind of see top sites by categories. And so I grabbed, you know, some for, you know, shopping, some from news, some from sports. And I got about 150 sites. And um, me and my buddy Dave did a bunch of analysis. And we were able to come up with these different points of data. So first off, the total number of anchor text that a site has, um, the amount of exact matches that they have, the amount of partial matches that they have, the amount of generic anchors they have, the amount of URL matches, so, you know, www.yoursite.com or just yoursite.com, and then no anchor. And now no anchor is a uh, just straight link to your site, so it's like a www.yoursite.com. The main difference is, is that it's actually, um, it's actually hyperlinked with no text. Um, so it's a little bit different, but I grouped it in the same when we actually do some analysis. So as you can see, um, we did about 122 sites because I deleted some sites with very small amounts of links because that's not a big enough sample size and they were kind of skewing a lot of the results. Um, and so you can see we got all of this data from about the top 120 sites. And I'm going to make this all publicly available, all this data. Um, I'll be shooting it off uh, on the newsletter and also be posting it on the forums. And so I took this data, which shows, you know, for example, for 888.com, which I think is a gambling site, um, it has a total of 26,029 total anchor text in its portfolio. It has 363 exact matches, um, about 3,000 partial matches, about 10,000 generics, and about 13,000 uh, just straight URLs. And so over here, what I did is I grabbed all that data and just very simply threw it into percentages. And if you scroll to the top, what that allowed me to do was find the average percentages for all of these sites across the board. So this up here is just looking at um, anchor text coming from individual domains. So not uh, it discounted um, if a certain website was sending multiple links from multiple different pages. And so if you look up here, we have exact match at 32%. Partial matches at 13%, generic anchor at 21%, and you all matches at 33.5%. Um, what I would say is with this, we were looking at just the root domain. And so when you're looking at just the root domain, you're going to have um, a higher exact matches count. Because if you think about it, there's only so many different ways to link to like Alexa, for example, right? Um, so this wasn't looking at long tail pages where you're going to have a lot less exact matches and probably a lot more partial matches. Um, but these are good ranges that you should be looking um, to shoot for. And I think the very important thing to point out is looking at generic and URL matches, which is the fact that URL matches counts for 33.5% of links um, from you know, a bunch of different websites. So this is kind of the portfolio uh, that you should be shooting for. Now, should you be shooting for exactly 33.4%? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. You probably want to be plus or minus 10%. Um, but this should give you good ranges to shoot for. And so like, the very interesting thing is um, we were taught you know, to 
anchor most of your backlinks. A lot of people back in the day, I remember a year or two, thought that just straight URL backlinks were pretty much worthless. Um, when in fact, uh, they're obviously not, and they obviously are a big part of uh, you know, what your portfolio should be. So looking at 33.5%, uh, that's, that's way up there. Um, generic, one out of every five of your anchors should be generic. Uh, so when you think about that, that's pretty big. Um, and down here, I did the exact same stuff for referring pages. So this can include multiple links from a domain. And the numbers get a little bit more normalized as to what I was expecting. So exact matches come in about one out of every four anchor texts. Um, partial matches, one out of ten. Generic, 25%, so one out of four of those anchor texts is uh, generic. And then once again, um, eight out of ten is just straight URLs. Think about that. Eight out of ten links are just straight URLs. Um, so when we look at Penguin and what we found out, um, it looks like Google was primarily looking at exact match anchors. Um, so a lot of people in these threads were posting, um, like in response to this webinar, like, well, all I'm really going to do is, you know, uh, just build less exact match anchors. You know, I'm just going to randomize a couple of other things in. And I, I think it's important to, to actually kind of see what the numbers are and, and really look at that when you're building links. Because if you think about that, 8 out of 10 of your links being unanchored, um, most people that are just going at it, they're going to be way low on the range for URL matches. Um, so I'm going to paste these numbers over to you guys here right now. Um, Oh, four out of ten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Four out of ten. I was times it by two in my head. Yeah. Um, four out of ten um, are coming back as URL matches. And when you think about it, I think most people are probably uh, building way less. So to get past Penguin, um, just lowering your exact matches is probably going to be a good idea, right? Um, but when you think about the fact that Google is obviously looking at anchor text, Right? And the primary thing behind the Penguin update in this over-optimization penalty was looking at anchor text. Um, I think that's a pretty big flag to us that Google's realized that anchor text is a pretty big footprint of an SEO. And they're going to be doing uh, probably more analysis there and, and more evaluating a site uh, using the anchor text in the future. Um, so those are ranges right there that I would try to aim for. Um, and the closer you get it to like a natural site, um, the better it's going to be. And I would just point out that you know there's there's different examples in here of you know sites that, for example, um, have 86% URL matches. So there's sites all across the board. So this isn't to say you know build it exactly like this, or your site won't rank, or your site will get penalized. But this is the ranges that you should really be shooting for, if um, if you kind of want to make your site look natural, which is very important for SEOs. Um, another big thing coming uh, about anchor text I think everybody should think about, and this is another incredibly easy footprint that Google could pick up uh, on an SEO. Um, think about this. So when you're building a site, there are some exceptions to this, but usually if you're link building to your site, you're probably accounting for the majority, if not all, of the links that you're building to your site. Um, so that means that everything that you're building is a potential footprint. Now think about this, right? Let's say we pick you know, an exact match anchor in our link building. We have two partial matches. You know, we have three different generic terms we use. And then we have the four variations that you can do for URL matches. right? So that should give us a good healthy mix. Actually, think about this. Um, Google has a list of all of your anchor texts. How hard is it for them to analyze the amount of unique anchors you have? Not hard at all. If your site has 10 unique anchors, that's a huge footprint relative to other sites that have tens and tens of thousands of unique anchors coming in. Because you kind of think about people naturally linking out there. How are they going to naturally link? And it's going to be pretty randomized, and that's going to account for a lot of unique anchors. So when you're building links, you really need to think about 
how can I not only hit these ranges, but how can I build as many kind of unique anchors as possible? Because if I was Google, that would be the next thing that I looked for. Is okay, wow, we found a huge footprint of SEOs, which is that they were using way too much exact match anchor. Well, we can also look at the amount of unique anchors that they have. And if a site is, if a site's backlink portfolio is almost 100% SEO'd, you can pretty much safely say that their amount of unique anchors is very, very, very low. And that's another huge footprint. And that's something that everybody should keep in mind. So, I mean, like, how could you go about, um, you know, coming up with a lot of unique anchors? Um, I'm going to do some analysis with my partners at Drip Feed Blasts. And we're actually going to extract all of the generic anchors that we found on these websites. And I'd say that that's the tune of probably you know, maybe 25 to 50,000 unique generic anchors. And we're going to pull all of that data out and, and, and publish that. So you guys definitely want to keep, uh, keep an eye out for that because that's going to be very, very useful for people that are doing any sort of automated link building um, to be able to take a, a, you know, 25,000 to, you know, 50,000 unique generic anchors and be able to plug that in um, to your link building because that's going to greatly help you kind of have this... Uh, um, a, a more natural looking anchor text portfolio. Um, one other thing, um, when you're thinking about how Google's penalizing this, um, I, I had a few theories actually. Um, one theory is that Google sees that a site is over optimized and they straight penalize the site. Um, that's a very real possibility, especially since that we've seen that Google has opened the doorway for some negative SEO. So that's a very real possibility. That's what they're doing. Um, but they could also be doing something different where when they see um, a ton of uh, anchors that are like exactly the same, so like a ton of exact match anchors, they may just be discounting some of the exact match anchors. So like if you have 10,000 links pointing to your site and all 10,000 have the exact same anchor, maybe instead of penalizing you, they're just discounting a portion of those links. And that could cause uh, rank drops. And once again, that's just a complete theory, but if I was Google, that's how I would do it um, to prevent uh, a negative SEO uh, kind of opening. I would just devalue links um, that had just, you know, 10,000 links had the exact same anchor text. I would, uh, I would definitely uh, devalue them. So um, I'm going to uh, send this data out to all of you guys. So if you're on the list and anything like that, uh, you're going to be able to look at this data, do some analysis on your own, do some crunching on your own. Um, but yeah, this is a, a pretty solid uh, range that you should be looking for um, when you're building uh, when you're building backlinks. Uh, you know, to keep in mind what your anchor text should be. Um, let me hop over to chat. Um, I just wanted to see if anybody had any questions about that. Looks like we're good. So if you guys were on any of the uh, forums, if you found me on any of the forums, I'm going to link to uh, that data. I'm going to upload it to Google Docs. So you'll all be able to look at that data, uh, come to your own conclusions, um, and you'll also be able to see my analysis, uh, which should help you guys kind of build your anchor text properly. And then uh, also keep an eye out for that dump of uh, generic anchors, uh, which will be probably uh, pretty huge for you guys that are doing a lot of automated link building. Um, so that pretty much covers uh, the anchor text portion of this. And what I want to kind of do right now is just kind of have an open format where you guys can ask any questions about uh, anchor text, any questions about uh, what I went over. If you want to look at uh, uh, different points of this data, um, by all means. And if you guys just have any SEO questions in general, um, please ask them as well. And we'll kind of open for this a little bit. Um, yeah, so Alpha Wolf, that's exactly what I was kind of wondering when I was doing this anchor text analysis, um, was that if Google's penalizing for exact match anchor, um, what would stop people from uh, negative link building by just building a bunch of exact match anchors to their site? And that's when I kind of came up with that theory that if Google is still, hopefully, um, trying to prevent negative SEO from happening, then that they would just devalue 
um, some of the links coming in with that exact match anchor. So once again, if you had 10,000 links coming in with the exact match anchor, and they devalue you know, half of them because there's just way too many coming in, that's a possibility of what they're doing. Um, but once again, that's just speculation. Um, do social bookmarks still work? Yeah, I think social bookmarks uh, definitely still work. Um, but I think a big thing is um, trying to keep your content uh, quality and unique, although I don't think that um, Google's content analysis is too far ahead. Uh, I do think if you're writing good content, um, that should help with anything you're doing, whether it's Web 2.0 properties, social bookmarks, any of that. But yeah, I think uh, social bookmarks still do work. Um, and still are effective, but it's all dependent on you know what kind of niches that you're going after. And I don't think that social bookmarks on their own are enough to rank for you know like medium uh, competition terms. Um, question, I got that. What did I use to scrape sites? Okay, great question. Uh, music for Mike. So here's the thing. Um, you guys can actually check your anchor variations yourself um, from Google. Uh, Google Webmaster Tools, that is. So let's go over here. Google Webmaster Tools, API, uh, I think it's Reference Guide. I don't have a Google Webmaster account, but you guys, sh I can grab this information from an API, so you should be able to grab it um, from your, uh, you should be able to grab it from your like dashboard area. So it's called the Keywords Feed right here. So the keyword feed represents a snapshot of how Google sees your site. It lists keywords found on your site internal, as well as in the anchor text of external links to your sites. So you guys should be able, if you have Google Webmaster Tools, to actually see uh, what your anchor text looks like, and then be able to do your own analysis and and say, okay, you know, based on um, you know, these numbers, I'm way low on URL matches or I'm way high on exact matches. And you can kind of teeter down your numbers into those proper ranges. Um, where I got all that data from is ahrefs.com. Um, I scrape portions of the site. The issue with ahrefs.com is it's great for looking at bigger websites um, because they're easier for ahrefs to scrape and to get, you know, uh, and to find backlinks for. But smaller websites, it's not able to give that detailed information. So on a smaller site, it's going to show that you only have like 10 or 15 backlinks, and you just can't do any meaningful analysis. It's too small of a sample size. And so if you have Google Webmasters tool, you should be able to dump all of that data. Um, once again, I'm going to shoot you guys uh, this link right here. Um, because I'm working with one of my buddies on actually developing a free tool to evaluate your anchor text. And so basically, it'll let you just uh, plug into the API, uh, Google Webmasters API, and we'll just pull your anchor text data and then compare it to the um, scraping we did from Ahrefs and give you recommendations on how to change up your anchor text. Um, Nick, whose room are you in? I'm in my room, actually. Is there any way to get our sites already affected out. Um, Jimbo, yeah, I definitely think uh, there is. And I think the big thing would be to um, try to get your anchor text uh, portfolio a little bit more normalized. And so if your anchor text, uh, exact match anchor text is 70, 80, 90 percent, um, then you're going to really want to get that number down. Um, as you can see from uh, Microsite Master's analysis, it looks like over 60% was affected. But I mean, we don't want to just be one step ahead of Google. We just don't want to be good enough for Penguin. We want to try to be good enough so that every three months, we don't have mild heart attacks when an update happens. So we want to shoot for um, the ideal ranges, which are right here. And so if your site's penalized because of um, you know, anchor text over optimization, then you want to try to get your anchor text portfolio to look more natural, um, to look more normal. And so um, how hard or easy that is is all going to be dependent on how many links you've already built. Um, my company, Dripfeed Blast, for example, we have wiki links and we have profile links. Those accept unlimited keywords. So those are great ways to you know, get a lot of URL matches. I think actually profile links naturally have about 30% uh, just straight URL links. Um, but those allow you to like input 
uh, an unlimited amount of anchor. And so that would be a great way for you to get your generic and your partial matches down. And I wouldn't, um, if your exact match is at like 75%, I wouldn't just like stop building exact match. I would just start building these ranges and your anchor text portfolio is going to start to normalize uh, on its own. Um, so yeah, so um, it all kind of depends on how many links that you've already built. I think it can be done if you've built 100 links or if you built 10,000 links, but it will just take some more time. And so ideally, you're probably going to be looking for um, companies like myself, Trophy Blast, or other companies that offer types of links that are going to let you have a lot of different anchor text inputted into them. Because one of the things that actually kind of causes this problem uh, is the fact that a lot of services out there, in order to be convenient, would only ask you for like three keywords. So they'd say, give us your main keyword and two secondary keywords. Um, and they were doing it for a good reason, because uh, it was convenient, especially they weren't asking you for 15 different keywords. But the downside is, is that a lot of people started adopting that kind of uh, user input form for their link building services. And when the majority of link building services only let you build three different types of anchor, uh, you're going to have a huge problem with a lack of unique anchors and probably a huge problem, probably a huge problem with like your exact match or your partial matches being way too high. So look for link building types out there that are going to allow you to build um, uh, a lot of different anchors. Uh, over here. Question, so article making, if I diversify the links and categorize where it goes on unique article wizard, um, would that be okay? Um, Jerron, I would, if you're able to diversify the anchor text, then yeah, you should be okay. And once again, you should be shooting for those ranges. So I'd say, you know, 25% exact match, you know, 10 to 15% partial matches. Um, and then you want your just straight URLs to be around 40%, and you want your generic to be around 25%. Can you please show the Excel uh, sheet again? Yeah, Kevin Mose. And um, if you uh, sign up for the newsletter, or if you join from any of these forums, I'm going to post it there. Um, I'm going to upload it to Google Docs, so you'll be able to look over all of it. Um, but basically, what I did is I took 130 sites from Alexa, um, I scraped their anchor text data from Ahrefs, and then um, my buddy and I actually did um, analysis on the anchor text dumps that we got. So, for example, for exact matches for 888.com, um, you know, the exact match was 888.com, and partial matches were um, were things that included 888 in it, but had other text as well. Generic was things that didn't include 888 in it. And then, of course, URL matches is just the straight URL. Um, and so basically, I uh, took all of this data. I came up with percentages. So, you know, for example, Alexa has 42.7% exact match, 35% partial, 3% uh, generic, and 18% URL matches. I took all uh, 126 of these, and I did the... Uh, I. Uh, looked at the averages for all of these terms, uh, sorry, for all of these metrics based on the, you know, 130 different sites. And so um, if you just look at uh, one anchor text coming back per domain, uh, these are the numbers you get, 33%, 13%, 21%, 34%. Uh, and then if you actually look at referring pages, which allows, you know, uh, which looks at anchor text, uh, just at the page, not just the domain. So uh, a certain domain could send, you know, 10 or 15 different links. Um, and that's more normal to look at. And so um, the numbers are 25% for exact match, about 12% for partial matches, 25% for generic, and close to 40% um, for URL matches. On Microsite Masters, they uh, they talked about graphs and talked about relevant niche links. Got any input on that? Um, I mean, if you can ever get a niche link, you always want one. It's going to be valuable, uh, more valuable uh, when all things are equal than a than a non uh, niche link. Um, my only thought is that it's hard for Google 
at least I think, to really accurately be able to say, like, this link is relevant, you know? This link is from a relevant site, um, or this link isn't. I think that they can be pretty sure, and they can do some analysis like, okay, this link's coming from a site that's talking about the same thing. Um, but I don't think that they're going to they, you know, do stuff like any penalization there, stuff like that, because I think that's really hard um, data crunching, and they can't be 100% accurate. Whereas, once again, if you look at anchor text, right, um, exact matches being over 65%, Sure, some natural sites may have that, but it's a huge, huge footprint. It's a huge, huge footprint. Um, and so I think they're just looking for the, th uh, the easiest spots to find footprints where they can be most sure. But yeah, definitely try to find relevant niche links. I think that's hugely important. Um, my hourly rate, uh, depends on what we're doing. You know, like If we're going out for a beer, uh, free of charge. Um, but if we're doing work, then you know, there's going to be some dollar bills attached. If you don't want to receive unnatural link notices, please do not add your site. Thanks, Matt Cutts. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Ahrefs data, um, I don't think it's the best tool probably for, you know, um, trying to get like a complete picture of your site, especially when most sites are smaller. But I think it does give us a lot of great data on trends in the web. And since we're, our whole goal as SEOs is to mimic what Google wants, some people would use the word manipulate, but I like the word mimic. If we're trying to mimic what Google wants, then it's important for us to look at you know, what the natural web uh, looks like and then try to blend in. Because the more we blend in, the less noticeable we are. Um, and thanks for showing up, Bits Dog. Uh, see you all the time on Wicked Fire. Uh, this section of MSM article is Google is trying to replace or devalue anchor text with use with niche content relevancy of links as a primary relevancy. Um, I still think that anchor text is um, very, very important. And once again, I think Google um, is pretty far away on being able to uh, really accurately analyze content. Um, so I think anchor text is still very important. I, think, I still think links are very important. I mean, the most conclusive thing that they had right here is, right, you know, this is just blatantly obvious right here, that it, it's just uh, anchor text over optimization penalty right here. Um, and once again, the reason why there are so many people in this range is, is because uh, previously it was very easy to rank using that tactic. So yeah, I think anchor text is very alive and well, and I think it will um, continue to be, at least until Google can really start um, improving its content analysis. Because like, once again, a lot of people think Panda is about content, but if you actually like read what they're doing with Panda, it's very little to do with content. It's very more with just analyzing a site, its analytics, and its layout, uh, which are way easier to crunch data-wise than content. Right? Content isn't numbers. It's harder to crunch. Um, shoot some point on those walls, some paint on those walls. Uh, nah, man. Uh, that would take time and I don't like doing stuff like that. Like, you know, if I get like a girlfriend and she wants to paint my wall, by all means. I mean, I have a painting on the ground right here that I could hang up. Uh, say you have 100 sites uh, you want to put links on. Would it be better to use the high, R, high PR sites for exact match and the lower PR sites for anchor diversity? Ryan Miller, that's a great question. Um, I was actually talking to someone a couple weeks ago about this exact same thing. And I said, in theory, right, you would want to be randomized across everything, right? So some of your high PR links would just be straight unanchored or straight partial match, and some would be straight exact match. Uh, and I said, in theory, it's a lot easier to do that than in practice, because in practice, when you're dropping, you know, what you think is going to be your most valuable link, and, you know, you really want to put that exact match there um, instead of just, like, you know, a, a straight unanchored link. So what I would say is, I mean, uh, if you're really trying to make it look normal, then you got to keep it random. So if you hit the random button and it says put a generic link here, you put a generic link here. Um, but in practice, um, I, I really can't say. I mean, my hunch would be that, you know, if you, um, if a good amount of your links from high PR sites are exact match, I, I don't think it will be a huge deal. But once again, I mean, Google determines what PR is. 
So once again, it wouldn't be that hard for them to do analysis saying, okay, well, the most valuable links that they have all have exact match. But I don't think that they'd be doing anything like that. Once again, I think they're just more looking at, okay, this site has 60% exact match anchor. Um, something's up here. So just go with your gut, Ryan. I don't think there's a real clear answer there. Uh, but in theory, once again, in theory, um, plenty of sites get links from high PR sites that are unanchored, generic. So if you're trying to look natural, um, you're going to have to kind of swallow the pain. Um, Alpha Wolf, yeah, if you're talking about 1.0, uh, it may have been a lot harder uh, to diversify. Now, like, we have, like, a a nice little like template, especially for like profile links, where you can just you know add a bunch of anchors that you want. So it's a lot easier, especially if you don't know uh, spin tax and stuff like that. Uh, what if you have an exact match domain that compromised of your main keyword? Um, does this skew anchor text percentages? So if your like actual site is EMD exact match domain, does this skew your anchor text percentages? Um, I don't really know to be honest with you. Um, what I can say is, you know, that Google seems to just how they give you this keywords feed. If you see, it lists the keywords found on your site internal, as well as in the anchor text of external links to your site. So it looks like they kind of like group the keywords you have on your site and the keywords coming in and kind of do some analysis there. I, I wouldn't change it up just because, you know, your exact match, you have an exact match domain. I would still shoot for those normal ranges. And once again, if you kind of read what this says, if anything, that EMD should benefit you. Um, and once again, like, I don't think you need to make any adjustments. And once again, like, I don't think people need to shoot for, like, this exact, um, this exact number. Because, I mean, there's plenty of examples of sites that have you know, way higher, way lower than these ranges. Um, so you don't have to shoot for like exactly those numbers. Um, I think it's just important to hit those ranges. So you know exact match, you want to be probably between 20 and 40 percent. Partial matches, you know, between 5 and 20 percent. Generic between, you know, 15 and 35. So just try to shoot in those ranges um, and you should be fine. Uh, would you recommend taking down irrelevant links to your site? No, I wouldn't. Um, just because removing a link um, isn't good because, I mean, if Google recrawls that page and then sees that the link's gone, um, they're going to treat that as a bad signal um, towards your website. Um, I don't think irrelevant links are, you know, like the end-all, be-all. Once again, like, I would love, um, I would love a, you know, homepage link from, let me look at my site, right? Uh, so from bankofamerica.com, a banking site, right? I would love a homepage link to my Make Money Online site from Bank of, uh, Bank of America. So I wouldn't get rid of irrelevant links. Like I don't think, <coughs> I don't think Google is penalizing irrelevant links because so many sites link to other sites that aren't in their same niche, you know? That's natural. It's natural for a blog that maybe primarily talks about economics to occasionally link to um, any sorts of pages that aren't in the niche. So I don't think Google's doing anything negative um, with irrelevant links. I mean, I do think that a relevant link, all things being equal, is better than an irrelevant link, but I don't think an irrelevant link is bad by any means at all. Doesn't seem to give you a quantity of each anchor. Oh, see, that's not cool at all. That's not cool at all, man. Um, at least you can look at that and kind of get a good idea whether you have enough uh, unique anchors coming in. Um, and Boss Sauce here says, Majestic SEO will give free anchor reports for sites you own. So give Majestic SEO a roll. Um, EMD skewed anchor. Um, didn't completely understand how to pull anchor text data from uh, Webmaster Tools. Once again, I said I don't actually have a Webmaster Tools account. Um, what I can tell you is uh, this is a link to their API, and they talk about being able to extract uh, the anchor text of external links from the keywords feed. Um, so you should be able to take a look at it there. But unfortunately, somebody said that, um, wait, actually, no. No, no, no. Actually, uh, you guys know Gorilla from Wicked Fire. He was able to hook me up with a uh, with a download 
from Google Webmaster Tools, and it did show the quantity. So you guys should be able to see the quantity. So yeah, it should. Google Webmaster Tools sh still should be very valuable for being able to evaluate your anchor text. Um, I just told an ant, uh, Gorilla that it was something other uh, under keyword speed. If anybody can go into their site and actually find a link to it, um, that'd be great. You should be able to download a CSV because I got a CSV and it showed um, it showed the anchor text and it had a quantity field uh, field as well. Got a raspy voice right now. So once again, uh, yeah, Webmaster Tools is different than Open Site Explorer. I'm pretty sure. I think those are different things. Um, how would you check this exact data for my sites? Well, the only way I know of like getting really reliable data, uh, someone mentioned Majestic SEO. I don't know uh, how com like complete and comprehensive the data they give you is, but you can go straight to the source uh, if you have a Google Webmaster Tools, uh, Tools account, and they'll give you a download of exactly what your anchor text is. And so basically, if you look at your anchor text, uh, you should be able to point out your exact match. You should be able to point out what your partial matches are, your generic matches and uh, you're just straight URL links. And what you'll do is just take a sum of all of the anchors and then you know, divide exact match by the sum and that's going to give you your percentages. So you can see it right here with uh, my guide. So basically, um, I'm taking, I'm dividing like the amount of exact matches, which is B3, the amount of exact matches, by the total amount of anchors. And so that's what you'd want to do. And also make sure to hop on um, the newsletter um, because uh, Drippy Blast will be making a tool for you to be able to evaluate your anchor text portfolio for free if you have a Google Webmaster Tools account. We'll just pull it straight from the feed so that you don't have to deal with anything. Or we'll also allow you to upload a CSV from Google Webmaster Tools in case you don't want like that API hookup, which I can understand. Uh, but yeah, with this data at, at Drippy Blast, we're going to be trying to do a lot um, especially like helping you guys uh, be able to easily include generic and maybe even partial matches into your, you know, uh, anchor text for like wiki links, which we just released, uh, and that should be able to help you guys, you know, get a good amount of uh, anchor text diversity. <coughs> Shouldn't this data site be pulled from sites that are currently ranking, not based on lecture traffic? Well, if you want to. Um, so the keyword feed, yeah, yeah, Alpha Wolf, the keyword feed is there. But if you're on, if you have a Google Webmaster Tools account, you should be able to go into the dashboard and like go to the keyword section and be able to pull it out uh, manually in the CSV. Shouldn't this data set be pulled from sites that are currently ranking, not based on Alexa traffic? Um, ideally, yes. So like ideally, I would have taken like 100,000 sites just across the web that were ranking for terms. Um, and do an analysis over all of them, but that just wasn't really feasible. Um, so Alexa traffic isn't the most accurate for um, you know all sites. But once again, I went to Alexa and I took the top sites, like the top ten from each category. And so you can be fairly certain that the top sites, like the top a thousand sites in Alexa, are going to be pretty close to the top a thousand sites on the web in general. Um, and so that's a good baseline to look at when you're trying to figure out things like this. So like, you know, once again, uh, once again, you know, if you like look through here, so, you know, you know, uh, cdc.gov, crack.com, cnn.com, you know, google.com, Facebook, Expedia, you know, Living Social, Live Journal, marketwatchmatch.com. These are some of the bigger websites out there on the web. So while it's not a perfect sample size, which would ideally be from like hundred, uh, <coughs> hundreds of thousands of sites, um, this is a, a good way to look at, uh, you know, to get like a pretty easy to do accurate analysis. And here's another thing, right? Once again, if I was able to just like grab data from ranking sites, um, I could actually end up scraping a lot of sites that have been SEO'd and that would skew the data away from what natural should look like. Um, <coughs> how do you decide which keyword you consider to be exact match for each domain? So in these cases, I would, um, like so for CNN.com, the exact match was CNN. Um, you know, for ClickBank, it was ClickBank. For CJ, it would be CJ and Commission Junction. Uh, for CDC, it would be CDC and Center for Disease Control. And then like an example of a partial match would be like, click here to find out more about CDC. That, that would be a partial match. 
according to how I did my analysis. Whereas if a link just said straight CDC, then it would be an exact match. You know, another example, um, I'm trying to look at ones where maybe it was like a little harder. Because like a lot of these, like so like for MSN, we just took straight MSN, you know, mini clip, we just took straight mini clip. And that was the exact match. And then a partial match would be if, uh, if it included that term in the anchor text, but it wasn't just exclusively that term. Um, when you've already built tons of links and went to the manual reviewer, how do you fix it? Well, uh, I don't know exactly, you know, how a manual review works, whether they, you know, manually flagged your site and there's nothing that you can do until you, uh, you know, put in a reconsideration request or whatever that jazz is. Um, if you're like uncertain whether it went to a manual review, you know, you could have just gotten axed automatically. Um, but once again, I would just try to build your links um, in these ranges. Or where are these ranges? Over here. So I would try to build them according to these ranges. So if right now you have 70% exact match anchors and you have 10,000 10, links, then you have a little bit of work to do, you know. Um, but you definitely want to get your ranges as close as possible. And once again, I don't think it's as simple as just lowering your exact match because that may help you out this time around, but you, you never know what Google's going to be looking at um, in future updates. And I think Google definitely realized that anchor text is a pretty easy thing to look at. Um, and then also, once again, another big thing <coughs> uh, in data that I'm going to get uh, to you to help doing this would be to try to make your... Uh, the total number of like different anchor texts you use as high as possible. So your unique anchors, uh, you want that number to be as high as possible. Because once again, if I'm Google, the next footprint I look at is, okay, this site has 70,000 different anchors. Let's see how many unique anchors they have. Or sorry, I'd probably go like this. Okay, they have 70,000 anchors. Their exact match is 35%. That seems fine. Well, how many unique anchors do they have? 30 or 40, you know, for 70,000 backlinks. That's a flag right there. You're gonna get you're gonna flag 15 yards for fake and SEO. Um, see, uh, Harry, that's something that um, I wasn't 100% sure about, and I just made uh, I kind of had two opinions, which was one, one it's a penalty, or two it's just a devaluation, where basically if you had 70% exact match anchors, they just discounted some of those exact match anchors uh, in the links that they were associated to, of course. Um, so I can't give you like a, an exact um, answer to that because it's all hypothetical. But if I was Google, I would try to minimize negative SEO, and the best way to do that would just be to devalue the links instead of penalizing someone for over-optimization. But for the most part that we've seen from Google, penalties can be reverted. I mean, all of the people that got hit with uh, like link loss shock effect penalties when they lost a bunch of their links like due to ALN and BMR DNXings, uh, a lot of them bounce back. Uh, so I think a lot of penalties um, are going to be lifted kind of either they're just a temporary penalty or you kind of have to get your site back in order first. Um, so I would hope that it's just a devaluation of links. And once again, try to build your anchor text as natural as possible and you're going to be able to avoid these. Um, questions, so this will be perfectly fine for profile making despite that we really don't have total control of what the website the profile is made from. Example, um, a profile about e from a form about Japanese anime. Yeah, so um, once again, uh, Jorana Kazan, I think I got the name right. Um, that would be an example of an irrelevant link, which, all things being equal, isn't as good as a relevant link, but it's still a good link. It, it doesn't have to be a relevant link for a link to be valuable um, because there's just so many cases in the web where a site is going to link to another site that's not in this niche. And it would just be absurd to not give, to pass any value, simply because uh, a site about cats is linking to a site about, um, you know, blue widgets. I mean, so uh, while it's not as great as if you could get a link from another eSig, uh, um, you know, website, it's still a good link. Um, what will be the best SEO strategy? <coughs> um, best SEO strategy, build a quality website with quality content so that you pass the panda filter. Uh, build your links with natural looking anchor text so you don't get hit by penguin. 
um, try to have a huge diversity of links. You don't want your, uh, your link portfolio to come from one or very few sources. You want it from a mixture of sources because if one of those sources gets taken down, you want to be able to recover. If all your links come from one source, one tactic, whatever, um, then you're going to run into problems, especially if those tactics get hit. So you want to diversify with links. You want to diversify with your anchor, as many unique anchor as possible. Uh, make sure that you're trying to hit those ranges. And then the biggest thing is to build a quality site, because that's going to last forever, a quality site. You don't want to just build your site to pass through Google. You want a quality site. Nick, did you check the top these top sites rankings after Penguin and Compare? <coughs> Actually, I did not. Um, that would have been cool to do, but I mean, we can like pull up, you know, some examples. So I mean, I always like to look at CNN.com, and so we'll just look at direct URLs. And um, I mean, you can see that their amount of backlinks has uh, has dropped, um, but you can also. Uh, and this is not www. But you could look at this, and I think in there, their tool over here. Once again, I haven't done this on like uh, all of these sites, but from what I've heard, for the most part, you know, uh, very big popular sites didn't get hit too hard. <coughs> I think there's like a graph. I can't find the graph right now, but uh, from what I heard, I don't think a lot of the big sites were actually um, affected that bad. But that would be interesting to look at. Say you have 100 sites you want to put links on. Would it be better to use the PR sites higher? Oh, good question. Yeah, I already answered that, so I'm a little far behind. Question, are you seeing higher ranking sites with a lot of hub links? Uh, seeing links that have linked from pages, which also link to three to five competitors in the same niche for the same keyword as the money site. Um, I haven't been able to do enough backlink analysis on on sites where I could actually like make a conclusion because you need to look at a good amount to get a decent sample size. Um, what I would say is I really don't see the value uh, with a lot of hub links. Okay, now I get you. So this isn't something you're creating. This is something that, you know, like there's a website that's covering your niche and a lot of your competitors have the links. Um, like, I personally wouldn't rank to my competitors. I wouldn't build links to my competitors. But if you're talking about, you know, being a part of other websites that have links to your competitors, yeah. I mean, if, if you can get a link where your competitors have a link, by all means, definitely do that. Any tools to help determine um, the niche of links in an automated way? Once again, I don't think that's uh, an incredibly huge deal. Um, for a lot of niches out there, if you just try to find relevant links, you wouldn't find enough, at least I think, to be able to, um, you know, to really rank effectively. Um, to determine like the niche of links in an automated way, I don't really know. Um, you could kind of do some data with, you know, scraping with Alexa or maybe Ahrefs and, and look at a link and then look at the keywords it's ranking for. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. Once again, my philosophy would be, if you can build a link on a relevant site, do it, definitely, as many relevant sites as you can. But I wouldn't uh, be so worried about like, you know, trying to, um, you know, trying to find only relevant links or stuff like that because um, there's no issue with irrelevant links. Are you all natural? <laughs> I am all natural, actually. No makeup on right now. A little unshaven. Um, how good effective is three or ones to the money site? Um, I don't know. It really depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're like three or wanting expired domains for link juice value, or if you're three or wanting um, an old site you have to a new site, I can say that three or ones happen naturally um, in the web. And once again, we're shooting for natural. Um, uh, but um, like if you have like 10 or 15 3 or 1 redirects going to your site, you kind of have to stop by, you know, step back and think like how many other sites out there actually, you know, do this. And once again, like you could just build all of your links through dozens of 3 or 1s and never get tripped up by Google because they just 
it's not a big enough deal for them to care. Um, but if you're trying to you know, make your site look as natural as possible, having a ton of 301 redirects to your site probably would look a little weird, I'd think. Um, but is Google like going to start penalizing sites with too many 301 redirects? Like, I mean, that sounds uh, pretty far-fetched to me. But once again, shoot for natural, right? Um, or ideally, just be natural if you just have an amazing site that everyone wants to link to. Uh, bank site, make money site is pretty relevant. Well, I mean, okay, yeah, but I mean, what about a uh, bank, a link from Bank of America to uh, prettypinkpandas.com, you know, still going to be a valuable link. Um, let's say you have a home page penalized due to over-optimization of anchors. Any way to fix this since I can't kill the URL like I might with a D page? Anything beyond rebalancing anchors? I don't think so. I think it's just straight um, rebalancing your anchors. That's where you're going to be able to, um, to fix the issue. I need some water really quick, so I'm going to walk and talk. I can't kill the site like I might with a D page. Yeah, I mean, I would just try to rebalance um, your anchors, and that's just going to take link building. Um, and so you're going to want to try to get those ranges down. Um, and once again, if you've already built a ton of exact match and a ton of partial matches, it's going to be hard for you to probably get down to the ideal range of around 25%. But if you look at Microsite Master's information, it looks like um, it looks like only 60%, only over 60% was penalized. So if you can just build some links and try to get that down to a more normal number, um, there's a good chance that you may... Uh, uh, the penalty may uh, not hit you anymore. Um, and once again, to do that, um, it's going to be hard to do that with service providers that only let you pick like three different anchors. So there's tons of services out there, I'm sure, that allow you to choose an unlimited amount of anchors. Look for those. Once again, I work at Drip People Us, and so I know we do. We have profile links, and we just released wikis that both can be run an unlimited amount of times and have an unlimited... A variation of anchor text. And once again, uh, I'm sure that there's plenty of other services out there that can do that as well. Um, but that's what you want to look for. Site, you know, services like MindDrip, FeedBlast that are going to allow you to choose a bunch of different anchor text. Because once again, if you're only able to choose three different anchor text, yeah, I mean, you'll be able to reduce your anchor text penalty, but you're still going to have an utter lack of um, overall diversity. A uh, question, what about making Web 2.0 blogs uh, most of them are uncategorized. Having diverse anchor text links on the page, okay. What about tags you put in the blogs? Um, if I'm putting, if I'm creating a Web 2.0 property, and it allows me to tag, I'm going to tag. I'm definitely going to tag A, and I'm going to tag uh, the most relevant tags I can. Because you want, when you tag your page, you're going to get link juice from the the like the tag section like that's a great way to funnel link juice to your web 2.0 property so you want to put as many relevant tags on there as you can um and having diverse anchor text links on the page is okay yeah i think it's okay uh, i think it's way more valuable to have like a hundred different anchors coming from a hundred different sites than a hundred different anchors coming from you know ten different pages where you're like you know you're really putting in a bunch of links um so you, you really want to get it from like a bunch of different uh, IPs, and, uh, or not IPs, different domains, um, preferably. But once again, you got to work with what you got. Um, so yeah, there's no problem using different anchor text links, um, at least I don't think. But I wouldn't overlink to your site on a property. It may look a little funky. Um, try to keep it to maybe like two or three links. But that's just, that's just my recommendation. Um, What's up, Alpha Wolf? Um, if you have a page that's over-optimized, can you republish that page to a new page with new content to remove the over-optimization penalty? That's a tough question that I cannot give you an answer to. Um, and the problem is, if you, can you republish that page as a new page with new content? Um, I, I don't know if you're talking about like deleting a page and then like moving that content over to a new page and building links from scratch. I wouldn't want to do that because then you're going to lose out on all of those links that you've built. Sure, you have an open optimization penalty, but you still have a bunch of links, right? And so oh, I would I would try to just get out of the over optimization penalty first before doing something like deleting my content and uh, and like you know restarting from the get go. Question: Penguin a penalty or a devaluation? Can't give you the answer. 
hope it's a devaluation. Uh, hope it's not a penalty because I think that's flawed thinking on Google's part. Um, but once again, those are going to look so similar uh, that it's hard to tell the difference. Um, what I would say is a lot of times penalties seem to be pretty like straightforward. It's like you're dropping 200 or everybody's dropping to 50. So if you you know look on uh, if you hear about people talking about Penguin, and if their drops are randomized, some people are dropping 10 spots, some people are dropping 50 spots, some people are dropping 400 spots, then I would guess that it's probably more of a devaluation where Google's looking at the 10,000 links that you have that all have the exact anchor text and maybe just kind of devaluing some of those. Is changing the anchor text of the link? All right. Boss Oz, um, basically your list is useless now. The top 1,000 sites don't represent the matches. Um, if you want to do analysis of 100,000 sites, and I bet you uh, 500 bucks that they're within um, you know, 15, you know, 10, 15 percent of these ranges. Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, you really, um, you really think that this is useless? This data is not useless. And um, it's not ideal. It's not exactly what 100,000 different websites have for their, uh, but for their anchor text. But I'd safely say that these are good ranges um, to shoot for. And I mean, if you want to do analysis of 100,000 sites and you come back and your all matches at 33%, well, I mean, that's great. But that's not, uh, that's not a huge difference, bro. That's a 5% difference. And if you're shooting for the proper ranges, you're going to be good. Um, does an exact match relate to keywords that a site is trying to rank for, though? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, would you consider an anchor of 888.com or 88 a brand anchor? Um, not work. Yeah, Johnny, um, that's, a, um, that's a very good point. Um, and once again, yeah, so this isn't... 100% uh, ideal because you know, for example, uh, 888 will probably be ranking for poker or something like that. Um, or you know, Steam Powered may be ranking for gaming, or or Southwest may be ranking for um, flight. So once again, this data isn't um, isn't going to be 100% flawless, mm -hmm. but um, these are good ranges for you to shoot for. Um, are you guys dis you guys have displaying problems too? Uh, nope. Are what Google's vans and thus these sites don't represent the average webmasters who owns a few sites and has done very little branding. Um, most of the sites listed in the top categories are what Google considers brands and thus they give them a pass. Um, I mean, if you really think that Google like has a manual list that's like, oh, we like these top 10,000 sites, so they're going to rank higher than anyone else. I mean, maybe. Um, that's the case. Uh, but once again, we're not looking at whether Google gives a brand a pass or not. We're trying to look at um, websites out there and what their natural anchor text looks like. And so even if Google's giving them a pass or not, uh, no one's going to sit here and argue that CNN.com, um, CNN.com, uh, you know, is going to have, you know, uh, or, or these top 100 sites are going to have just significantly different linking structure than the next 10,000 sites. Because once again, these sites are getting links naturally. And so when you look at a sample size of these links, you're going to see what the natural links uh, are supposed to look at. And actually, um, I completely forgot this. Uh, uh, Johnny, um, the difference here is that um, I'm also just looking at uh, the root URL. So like, you know, CNN.com is, uh, is going to be, um, CNN.com is going to have like, uh, like a, a deep page on CNN.com is going to have a bunch of different anchor text. Um, but people linking to straight CNN.com to describe them, yeah, sure, they're going to describe them as a news uh, service sometimes. But a lot of times, they're just going to straight describe it as uh, CNN. And that's why, like, right here and here, for example, you see these guys have 54% and 59% exact matches. So people are still heavily linking, um, you know, with the name of the site in that sense. Um, 
what terms is CNN.com ranked for? Well, it depends on what page you're looking for. Um, but they're probably ranking for a new service and uh, probably ranking for CNN. Um, Ahrefs search positions. Yeah, you can look at that. How can I generate many diverse anchors? Um, how you can generate many diverse anchors? Um, well, as I said, we're going to be releasing um, a list of random generic anchors, like a 30K list. So um, you'll be able to take from that list and get a lot of diverse anchors. Ideally, we're also going to be able to um, scrape these results and see where like someone uses their keyword and then has like random text before and after. So you can also do it with partial matches. Um, but yeah, so th that list of generic anchors will definitely help you generate a lot of diverse anchors for your generics. And then for your like partial anchor matches, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to like you know try to come up with as many different phrases as you can. Um, have some expensive EMDs in the XXX range that were penalized with a minus 50 penalize and take the valuable content for a new domain? That's a tough question. Um, have some expensive EMDs. I don't really know, man. That's a tough situation to be in. I don't know uh, exactly what a straight negative 50 penalty would be. But I mean, if it's been penalized for over a year and it, you haven't got rid of it, then maybe it is time to move on and at least try to get some value out of your content. But I mean, that's really a question that you're going to have to answer. I don't think I can really give you any insight that will help you make that decision. Um, you have a ton of old, low quality websites, more X factor style, bad backlinks, many pages. All of them are penalized, and I don't want to invest big energy in websites with cancer. So, how do I promote them cheaply or just completely focus on completely new products? Uh, I think. Scipio, uh, the best way to look at that is how much money you're making from those websites. Uh, if, you're not make, if you weren't making much money before, then you may want to just move on if they're just bad websites in general. Because once again, um, if there's you know, bad content, if it's a poorly designed site, even if you improve your backlink portfolio, how long are they going to last before they get whacked by something else that Google uh, doesn't like? So if you're not making that much money from them, maybe it's time to move on and just focus on trying to build quality sites and mimic um, as natural looking uh, SEO as possible. I would suggest lowering your keyword density as well in your content. Um, yeah, I mean my whole thing is when you write content, I would just write it naturally. And so um, if you write it, once again, shooting for natural, if you write it naturally, you should be good. Um, it should, man, because I was able to get a, I was able to get a dump. Look for uh, stuff under keywords, Marshall. Look under keywords. Um, my site was penalized for sure from number two for highly competitive phase, no one in the top 100. Yeah, so you're going to want to focus on trying to, um, you're going to want to focus on trying to diversify your anchor text if it got hit by this penalty. Um, instead of an average, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, Carter. I was thinking about um, back to my statistic days of doing, you know, quartiles and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I just took a straight average, which is once again why I recommend like, you know, I don't think it's a big deal to hit the exact, um, like the exact percentages. Uh, these are ranges that you should be looking for. Um, and so if you're aiming within, you know, plus or minus five to ten percent of these ranges, you're, you're going to be fine. Because once again, um, all of, uh, a lot of these sites are naturally at different areas of the ranges. Um, so if you're just shooting for a round here, uh, you're going to end up fine. Um, for generating anchors, oh, finally got to the bottom of the chat. For generating anchors, you can use ubersuggest.org and Google Keyword Tool. Yeah, Google Keyword Tool is a great way um, to, to get different anchors to use for your partial matches as well. And once again, you're going to want to try to like add as many variations to those as possible as well. So instead of just, you know, if your site's about cats and one of your anchor texts is about, you know, 
um, you know, saving cats, then you want to, um, then you want to, like, you know, say how to save cats, you know, different ways to save cats. You want to try to get as many unique anchors as possible. Are PDF versions of HTML web pages considered duplicate content by Google? Um, not sure, to be honest with you. Probably. Um, if it's searchable and the content is identical, PDF should only be unless it can be viewed after download. Um, but once again, I don't like a PDF version of an HTML page. I don't know your strategy for using that um, and whether it would cause you issues or not. Um, does this mean I should blast my site with tons of cheap links with extremely varied anchors? Um, you know, I would try to keep, you know, not just use cheap links. I mean, um, if you can get high quality links, medium quality, if there is a medium quality type of link, or low quality, just any types of links. Um, just you're looking for link building strategies where you can get, uh, you can input varied anchors. And that's, uh, and that's what's going to help you. Um, and I would, I would kind of try to build it um, over time. You don't want to just smack your site with a ton of backlinks uh, right off the bat. You know, try to spread it out over a couple a uh, couple weeks. But yeah, it's not so much the type of link. So like, you know, profile links and wikis, people would consider cheap links. And a lot of times actually cheap links are the easiest way um, or, or like the most reliable way to get diversified anchor text. But you also want uh, high quality links coming in too. And you want to vary those anchors as well. Um, but yeah, the way to get out of this, I think, is going to be to build links to get rid of your footprint. Do you think there's a difference between brand anchor texts and URL anchor text? If so, why? There are a lot of brands with longer names and phases that only get backlinks with .com. Brand anchor text and URL anchor text. Um, like, it, I guess you're talking about like if they're ranking for like a brand term. So like for my company, like dripfeedblast.com. Is there a difference between dripfeedblast.com and drip space feed space blasts? Um, once again, I, I'm really not positive um, how Google looks at them. I would think that Google will probably look at a URL link differently than an actually anchored link. Um, I would definitely assume that they're doing that. So yeah, I would think that it would be different. Um, do you think dust has settled from this nuclear explosion, or should we embrace for more? Well, uh, last year in March, Google released Panda, and this year in March they started the blog, the indexing, and then they released this Penguin stuff. So, I mean, it may be one of those things that they just make big changes in the spring, and then they just kind of grind them out to the next spring. So. If that's uh, what they're doing, then hopefully uh, the dust will be settling here pretty soon. But uh, no guarantees. Question, why are you doing these webinars? Um, because I like doing webinars. I think they're a lot of fun. I like hearing uh, what different people have to do. And I do like to try to provide value to people. What do you think about using minus 50 hit pages, 50 hit pages for homepage links to new sites? I don't know exactly what that means, though. Question, what are your thoughts on free cams worldwide? What are they doing to rank? Uh, probably PPC. You hate the month of March. Yeah, I mean, personally, I think that, um, uh, I mean, last year, 2011, they made a bunch of changes in March. And this year, happened in spring again. That could just be a coincidence. Or maybe they like to make big changes in the early uh, part of a year and then kind of optimize the changes over the rest of the year. And now you hate March. Yes, it is never fun when your stuff gets de-indexed. <coughs> um, let's see if there's any more questions. Yeah, you guys can keep dropping any more questions. And Boss and uh, the other guy that we're talking about, um, looking at like what these terms are trying to rank for, um, yeah, you know, it's it's not always going to be um, it's not always going to be ideal. You guys are right. You know, uh, Facebook uh, probably gets linked a lot as Facebook, but a lot of these terms are brand terms, and so a lot of times um, 
a lot of the anchor text that they're getting is um, is related to their brand. And I think in our cases as SEOs, um, we're going for an exact match, which can kind of be uh, interchanged. Um, a good way to improve this would be just to very simply go to um, ahrefs.com <coughs> and then go to cnn.com. And then you could just scrape these anchors right here and then look at the organic terms. But like once again, you know, CNN.com is ranking number one for CNN, which is kind of my point, is that our exact match in a lot of instances is going to be their actual domain name. Um, and of course, I mean, you look at all of the other stuff they have. They have dozens of different anchors. And I mean, what am I supposed to include them all as exact match? I'd probably include them as secondary. Um, and like, once again, we can look at Facebook. Come on, AHRefs. Make moves, bro. Moving slow. I guess I've pinged the site so much, maybe they're throttling me. Which would be no bueno. Or maybe everybody's hitting AHS now on this webinar. Um, can we blame Obama from Penguin? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, you need quality content and proper SEO site. Yeah, I mean, really, if you're still building really, really bad quality sites and you're not using unique content, it's just a matter of time before you're going to start getting hit. Um, and so you want to focus once again on building your site as natural as possible. And you want to build your site for the user because that's how you're going to make the most money. So when you're building your site, you want to be building it for the user. You want to be building a good quality site. It's going to pay off in the long run than just making a crappy site. And then all of the SEO that you're doing, you want it to be as natural as possible because the more natural you are, the less chance Google can find something, a footprint on your site. And so you know that's going to come down to backlinks. That's going to come down to anchor text. That's going to come down to some on-page analysis like your keyword density and stuff like that. Uh, what guest posting services do you recommend? Should I hire a virtual assistant for this? Any ideas on the best methods to build a list of sites in my niches that allow guest posts? Um, you could scrape Google for the keywords you're trying to rank for, and that will give you a list of sites in and around your niches, and then try to post on them. So that's a good idea for sure. Uh, would I hire a virtual assistant for this? It depends on how much money you're making with SEO and how much disposable income you have. If you don't have any disposable income and you're not making any money with SEO, then you probably need to do it yourself. But if you have money to spend and or you're making money with SEO already, definitely hire a virtual assistant because that's going to allow you to work on um, more important things. Um, what if my domain brandname.com got penalized for brand name keyword term? Well, I mean, that that kind of sucks, man. And um, you know, I think that's maybe one of the unintended consequences of this update because we did hear a lot of we heard a lot about websites not being able to rank for their brand term. And until we kind of thanks to you know Microsite Masters and some other people out there figured out that it was all about anchor text, it was hard to figure out why. And now it makes a lot of sense if brand name sites are getting penalized for over-optimization. Well, I mean, it's their brand name. And once again, you're going to get a lot of links naturally there. So that really stinks. And I mean, I don't know what Google's going to do about that because um, just naturally you're going to have a lot of links um, coming to your site about a specific brand name uh, more so than uh, you know, a, a non-branded site. So that's really unfortunate, and I think that's one of those things where you kind of got unintentionally caught in the mix. Um, if you're doing SEO yourself, if you're building a lot of links yourself, then um, then I think it would be a good idea for you to try to maybe reduce the amount of links coming in for brand name. Um, if a lot of people out there are just naturally linking to you, um, then you just kind of got un unintentionally caught in the crossfire. But you should probably be able to do the same thing to fix it. So out of the 17,000, see Marshall here, this is cool. We got a real live example. Let's see if Nick's data is uh, totally off. So out of 17,000 links, 3,000 are exact match links. So, 
So you're at 17% exact match. That's good. You're in the range. So if we look at my ranges right here, 24%, 25% exact match. So you're well within plus or minus 10% there. So you're perfectly fine on that. Um, I'm going to have them change the anchor text. Maybe that will reverse my penalty. Would you be interested in hearing the results? Yeah, I'd love to be interested in hearing the results. But you said that you only have 3,000 or exact match links, right? Well, that's only 17% um, diversity. So maybe I'm understanding you wrong. But I mean, I don't know how much I would switch all of those out if you're only at 17%. Uh, percent. I would probably look at your other links as well. Um, Yeah, uh, FHER, this is going to be available for download. Let me get you the link. Um, oh, it's going to be on here, right here. So if you hit this uh, link and sign up, I'm going to uh, send a link to the YouTube upload of this webinar. Oh, shit. Um, and and I'm also going to um, send out some other information, like my company, Drifty Blast, we're going to be doing analysis, getting a bunch of unique generic anchors, um, and uh, a lot of other useful info. So definitely sign up there, and you'll be able to get all this. And also, if you found me on Wicked Fire, if you found me on uh, Traffic Planet, I'll be dropping links there as well. Um, and I only can answer a couple more questions, because I have an appointment at 4.45, uh, so I'm going to blow through these quick, guys. Um, Question, one of the programs, Backlinks Genie, that I have access for profiling uses Xtremer. We all know that Xtremer has a negative vibe with it. I theorize that Google can sniff out Xtremer profiles made from something from, you should avoid that despite that, despite our diversity in the anchor texts. Um, I don't know if Google can sniff out Xtremer made profiles um, uh, as opposed to just any other profiles out there. Um, there's, if you're using Xtremer or if you're using uh, any link building software to build profile links properly, uh, you can reduce your footprint. Um, I don't think that Google is like sniffing out Xtremer profiles and doing anything uh, bad with it. Uh, once again, if they're penalizing it, should, I could load up 10 competitors and build um, 100,000 you know, or 50,000 links to each in a day. Um, I don't think uh, Google's looking at um, profile links like that. But that's just my theory. Um, then again, I could be wrong. Um, oh, the 17% is on friend sites. What does your ideal tier one look like? Say you spend 40 hours a week on, uh, how do you divide that time up on tier one? Um, my tier one is going to be um, you know, quality um, properties with content. So you're looking at web 2.0 properties. You can do wiki links. You can do article directories, you know, social bookmarks, um, links like high quality links from just like other sites, like naturally, like, you know, blog commenting on high quality sites that maybe you can't spam with Scrapebox, you know, just manually dropping links that are going to get approved. That's what I'm going to use for my tier one. Tier one should be all about quality. And how would I divide that time up on tier one? Tier one is generally links that are going to take you the most time to build. Um, links that you'll build to those tier one links are usually easier and quicker to do. Um, you know, a lot of them are automated. You got Scrapebox, you got Drip Feed Blast, we just talked about Backlinks Genie, you got a bunch of different services out there that can build automated links for you. Those aren't going to take as much time. So the majority of your time should be focused on building those high quality links that you really can't do automatically. Um, so, you know, 40 hours a week, I'd say 30 hours building tier ones, high quality stuff like that. The other 10 hours working on building links to those tier ones, working on building automated links. Um, once again, that's not including all of that other stuff, which is, you know, uh, you know, that uh, link building is just a part of SEO. And so ideally, you should only be spending 15 hours a week on link building and the rest on uh, improving your site. Beyond links, what are the best methods for acquiring social signals? Naturally, um, nice, six DFB subscriptions. You are a baller. Uh, we do use Xtremer. Um, beyond links, what are the best methods for acquiring social signals? Likes, tweets, naturally. To acquire them naturally, um, you really got to get your content out there um, in front of people. Look for, you know, uh, like news aggregator sites or stuff like that where you can actually get real eyes on your site. 
um, to get them to like stuff up. But to actually get natural social signals, you need people to naturally be able to, you know, natural people reading your site and uploading and all of that. Uh, follow up to my question, while well, I read the reports and profiles that may seem to share the same uh, David and I theorize seeing that many Davids were all from Russian websites beginning I'm paranoid um, yeah well that may just be um, whatever service you're using um, they I don't think that they're spinning usernames properly uh, like at your feed blast we spin usernames properly so we don't have footprints like that um, um, download of the negative SEO webinar. I can't get the download, bro, because um, they deleted it off of Twitch TV. And so that is dead and gone, only to be saved in people's memories. Um, okay, guys, I got to get out of here. I got an appointment at 445. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by and uh, checking this out. You can follow me at nkniper, um, my company's website is dripfeedblast.com. Make sure to check us out for your link building needs. Check out Microsite Masters. Check out their blog for great content. And check out their rank tracker, which is uh, uh, arguably the most uh, reliable tracker out there. And they give you results every day. And we all like looking at stats. So getting daily results is a lot of fun. Um, and uh, please uh, you know, bump uh, the Traffic Planet or Wicked Fire Threads. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't, post all of your comments. Um, I like the pros and the cons, you know. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Uh, let's just try to be respectful of each other. I don't answer to trolls. But yeah, um, actually I do. Trolls get me pretty hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, post here um, and keep an eye out. Uh, if you subscribe to the newsletter or if you're on these forums, keep an eye out on these threads. I'll be bumping them with an upload of this webinar. I'll be bumping them with more information such as a big list of generic anchors. Um, and maybe we'll be de developing a free tool for you to be able to look at your anchor text diversity. So keep an eye out on all that, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. It makes it so much fun when you guys come out and, um, and, uh, and do this with me. It it's a blast. So um, all of you guys, uh, have a great one.